Hey everyone, this is Art Leader 635 on Jimmy Master Animatronics, and today I'm not going to bring you a review. I'm going to bring you a little bit of the educational content that I can bring, or let's just say that I can, um, how's this word called? That I can provide, that's the word, that I can provide you. So today we're going to talk about the most enigmatic, most confusing, sometimes most outrageous but yet most um, definitive thing about a snowflake spinner. And what is that? The name says it. The damn snowflakes. So you all may have seen the fact that people complain about that they are hard to solder. And at the same time, they really don't tend to fail that much. They don't tend to, you know, just cut out of nowhere. And when you try soldering them, if you don't solder them quick enough and you spend too much time with the soldering iron, they basically burn out, they cut, and that's it. There's no way back. Well, I'm going to explain why does that necessarily happen? Why is it that that actually happens? And it's because of the way the wire is made. You know, Jimmy did not say, hey, we're going to grab a standard, you know, stupid wire, put two of them in the arm, and the thing's just going to flail it around, and they're just going to, you know... We don't care how the thing's going to turn out. They thought about it many, maybe 10 times or so. Um, the type of wire it has is a special wire. And it's not the wires that we usually know that are around 10 or 12, maybe a bit less, um, continuous filaments of copper. In this case, they actually thought with the head about it, you know. So, of course... Ignore the heat shrink because that's one thing that I did uh, last year when I fixed it. The only reason why I'm doing this video is because this actually started failing today. And I don't know if it's going to fail in this video or not, but I guess I'll show it. Lo and behold, it didn't fail even a, se a single time. Okay, so what basically happened today, I was testing this out because I'm testing all my Santas and shit, so I don't have that much things to do when Christmas comes by, which there's many time left, but you get the point. Um, and this these lights actually started flickering, you know? From times, they would actually turn off and turn on again, and I'm like, oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. You know, and even by moving the thing, it just doesn't make them flicker. And it's just like that, it, they just don't turn off. So you basically get the point, they just don't do it all the time. And that basically reminded me to show everyone the principle of functionality that these wires actually have, if we can call them like that. Because they are conductors, but they are not the type of conductors we are used to. They are not the ones that they use for the motor wires, for the button wires, for the speaker wires. You know, every other standard wire that has a thicker covering, in this case, Number one, just because of cosmetics, of course, because this really doesn't have, let's just say if they were to do a, um, if they were to do some kind of, I don't know, one with like something with black or another color, they really should have no trouble on changing the, uh, the isolation. But why does the, the wire defer? Well, it's basically like this. If it, I'll go ahead and show the uh, the principle, of course, in a second. I actually have the diagram over here, but I just want to go ahead and explain why is it that they use this type of wire. Because if it had a standard wire, you know, a standard wire that has nothing but copper in it, and all the copper is basically, even though there's a bunch of threads, the copper 
is actually continuous, you know, it's it's basically a solid filament and it has a few of those. They would base it would basically get to a time when they would all cut and once they all are cut, it would make no more contact and that would be 10 times more fragile than the snowflake spinners, you know, standard wire. Um what they basically did right here is that these are not solid. These are actually strings with intermittent bits of metal and there's more than one thread per wire, meaning that the way this basically transmits contact or this makes contact is that they all are uneven and they basically go from one to the other, from one, like from one, one string to the other, from one to the other like that. And that's why there's a bunch of them that basically guarantees that the thing is not going to have any misconnection if one of the strings breaks off. So let me go ahead and explain how this principle works. This is basically how every single, let's just call it filament, even though I call it a string, this is how the filament looks like, okay, from a really closer view. As you guys can see, it has pieces that are labeled as metal. These are metallic, pretty much. These are like little metal pieces that are not together in a solid thing. There's a string underneath all of them. And that's why when you, when you solder it, if you're not quick enough, if, if you don't tin it at the same time you solder the wire and you do two or three steps, you will end up burning this vinculation it has on all the threads. And that's going to basically break the wire off, just as usual, you know, what happens if you're not experienced with snowflake spinners. As I know that in the board I was going to have to solder properly, what I ended up doing is, as it says here, I made a little extension which was basically tinning this and soldering a regular wire and putting some heat, some heat shrink over it, you know, just for me to be able to solder the wire without having a hassle at the bottom. Because I already have enough of a hassle here, to be honest. I've already had a lot here. But let's. how does this work? Because showing this is not really enough. You have these, of course, as I said, these are metal and these little spaces are the string that's underneath. As I said, if you tin it more than once, as it's a synthetic string, it's gonna burn out. It's not like a metallic one, it's a th synthetic one. And it's gonna, this is gonna burn out and it's gonna basically come off separate and, and you know, you're gonna have to start from another bit of the wire. That's why you just have some, some you know, sometimes you have a butt hurt unless you do everything at once. You know, t you have the wire touched with it and you tin it, I guess that, that pretty much would work, but you just don't have to heat them up for a, you know, for a long period of time. You know, these don't stand as much as solder points and stallion chips or so. But this is basically how they work. Let's just say this, you have the LED connected here. Of course, this is one single wire. And this is where the board or the extension in my case goes. Okay, so you have, I don't know, you have the board pretty much soldered here and you have one of the lids of the LED soldered here. What basically happens is all of these are, you know, all of these have electricity, but let's just say, as I said, they're intermittent. The thing constantly spins. Let's just say one cuts off. That really doesn't matter because this can do here this, touches with this, touches with this again, then touches with this, touches with this, 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 and even when it gets to the spot, let's just say here it's cut, yeah? It gets to here and if it touches here, it will basically transmit a little electricity here a little more here and it's going to basically re-energize this wire, you know. They are intermittent pieces so that they they basically guarantee that the contact is going to be, you know, the, the most possible. That's why they have these wires that they tend to be a pain in the ass, but they're the best wires they could have ever chosen. That's why if these lights end up going out, well, I, what I would do is just re-extend those wires at the bottom and just, you know, pull the wire and that's practically it. Because these wires are really good. Um, that's why, you know, the thing that's over 10 years now, and lo and behold, it still works. The damn snowflakes still work. Gear split, but that doesn't matter. The snowflakes always work, you know, because it's probably one of the best parts of the whole thing. The wires that they used. That's why when you see it from the outside, you see this funky look that you're like, this doesn't look like any other copper wire when I strip it or something, you know? That's why there's many threads. And the divisions that you see, those little lines in between, that's basically where you can see the string. 
if you have a big ass magnifying glass or something. Of course, let me go ahead and clarify, it's not the same type of wire that they use here. Here they use a standard clear wire. It's a little bit more solid than other wires, I think. Yes, it is, it is. Um, but the only wire they use that's actually special is the one that goes through all the arm all the way to the to the bottom of the base pretty much where the where the thing connects to. So I mean I hope this this I hope this basically helped out to um, know the principle of functionality of this and know why um, at some points you know it's know why this thing doesn't really tend to fail that much if you don't use it that much. And at the same time, the fact that when you try to tin it, sometimes it just breaks off. It's just because it's it's how it's made. Let's just say, like, by example, as I said, it flickers, okay? As I said, it hardly does it because there's the other threads backing it up. If you basically twist the wire a little bit, that may be actually erased because the other threads are making contact. Let's just say you have the whole thing again, just like I said before. You have the uh, the different threads, and it's all just divided. In some spot, two of those threads break. They break off, there's no more contact, but yet there's a third one that isn't broken. Basically, it has divisions and everything, and let's just say that this one's not broken, so it has a space right here and a space right here. That's it. It can still pass contact through these wires, just like I, di I did before. It's just a zigzag in between the wires. You know, if you were to grab a singular thread, it would not make contact. It always needs more than one thread into each wire to actually make contact. And, you know, basically just transmit electricity from the bottom to this. So I guess that's practically it. I mean, I really don't have anything else for the video rather than just that. It's been something I wanted to do and wanted to get off my back for a while. I was planning to do it on November, but... I guess I'd rather just do the Santa Claus reviews there because I have around 80 Santa Claus to review, so, you know, it ain't fun, <laughs> at least not now, but I have, I'll, I'll have to get around them, so I'd rather do this right now just to show it, and um, let me know your opinion on the comments. So this has been Zodok Theater, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.